Hello and welcome. This is IdeaGen TV. Today for our Power Chat, we have Dr. Siddhant Gupta, Director of Incubation at Microsoft, heading it up. Welcome, Siddhant. Hey, Hello. thank you, Cooper. Great to be here again. You know, this is awesome. And um, today, I'll actually be having a Power Chat with a friend and a colleague I've known for almost 10 years now, uh, Nick Villar. He's the uh, principal hardware architect at Microsoft, a researcher, an academic, humanitarian, and he's done a lot, and, and a great leader. And one of the biggest properties he has uh, is being super humble, an amazing human being. So welcome, Nick. Good morning and welcome. Thank you for taking the time to chat with us on IdeaGen TV. It's so exciting to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So, so Nick, um, I wanted to dive in. And so I've known you since I was a young graduate student, and you were already the rock star in our academic community. It's almost, I think, 11 years now. I think 2009 is first mm -hmm. when I met you. And I've always been super impressed with kind of your research, your application of technology to really interesting problems. So a, one of the themes I have noticed in your work is um, you're always working on humanitarian problems. Like you're always trying to figure out how to apply some part of your research, technology, or skill set to a problem that's larger than all of us. So tell me a little bit about, is that really a theme or am I just perceiving it that way? And if it is, kind of what got you interested in kind of being altruistic here, so to say? Um, that's a really interesting observation. You know, I think I've always been interested in, in technology, fascinated by it. Um, but really, it's the point where uh, technology meets humans that is fascinating to me, the, the interaction the, the, uh, that, that, that happens. The, the moment that people get um, a technology in their hands and are able to use it, uh, to misuse it, to appropriate it in different ways, um, to let them you know, uh, use it as a tool to allow them to, to, to achieve the things that they want to achieve. Is that interaction that I've always been really um, uh, fascinated by, I, and I think um, so. So in um, uh, in my career in technology, I think I've always gravitated um, um, to 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 domains where um, um, humans are at the center uh, of 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 the picture. Um, technology is the the, the enabling uh, factor, but it's really the impact that they create. Um, in someone's life, that 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 is fascinating to me. That 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 moment, that effect. Um, so I, um, I guess I've you know I've I've been at at, uh, at Microsoft Research, um, yeah, almost as, as long as we've known each other uh, for for about uh, twelve years now. Um, and I think um, you know there, during that time I had uh, a, the opportunity um, to work. With uh, uh, a really exciting mixture of people, you know, a very multidisciplinary group, um, great engineers, uh, great scientists, uh, a, a amazing makers of things, but also, um, you know, a, a social scientists, uh, psychologists, um, a, 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 a ethnographers, uh, people that have, um, you know, uh, always take a very human. A centric view of the world, um, and, and I think that 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 particular combination has really influenced my uh, my my outlook. Yeah, that's so. Um, it, that's that's amazing that you know you've been putting humans at the center, and as as at least I noticed, you've always gravitated towards um, humanitarian problems. And more recently, like over the past five years, if I see in some of your really pioneering work in you know, helping kids, what are some of the societal problems that have bugged you or and are top of mind right now? Like kind of what are you thinking about the state of the world and, and where you want to kind of change that with some of your application of research and technology? So are there problems that bug you or have bugged you, something you want to share? I mean, I, I always am. I'm always fascinated by under, um, when 
you identify an underserved uh, community. Um, and technology is such a powerful lever. Um, and you know, I, I found a, a couple of times in my career that just um, even a small application of technology uh, in the right way can have such a big impact uh, in, in, in someone's life. And, and it's, it's interesting. It, sometimes it's, it can be a small group of people and you can have a really big impact. Um, or you can have a small impact for uh, uh, a, 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 with a large group of group of people, um, and sometimes you 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 find find problems um, a, where you know you can there's the potential to have a big impact with a large group of people, and th those are the ones that are really fascinating. And I, I'd love to talk to you about uh, a little bit more about how some of um, some of the problems have fitted in those, those yeah. different categories, but. I guess um, one of the most interesting, well, an interesting example of that was um, uh, a, a few years ago, uh, uh, Cecily Morrison, a colleague of mine, um, in, in I used to work in the in the uh, Cambridge UK lab, um, uh, and uh, she she was very involved in the uh, uh, in the uh, community with uh, working community with sight impaired. Um, a, and low vision uh, children. Um, a, her her own son was born blind, hmm. um, so she um, she was very a, 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 a active a, in this community and organized a couple of you know did things like organized technology workshops um, to engage uh, children who are blind or, or low vision um, to start to play with with um, a, a, a technology and. Uh, she organized a really fascinating one where where they they were doing a uh, little circuit design, um, uh, taking things like Arduino and building like simple circuits around them, um, and the physical part of it was okay. And then it came time to program these things, and um, a lot of times there was this very huge apparent gap that um, there weren't any tools. The kids were saying, "Oh, we we want to program these things. Now these ideas are what we want to do," but there weren't any tools to allow them to do that. So, so just to clarify, these kids who were visually impaired were building circuits, and and they had the tactical feel to do that. But um, you're saying yeah. the the ball they hit was you put it together, but now it doesn't do anything because you cannot really program it. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and they were coming up with all these ideas of what they wanted to do, and it would be as, you know this is a. A really great inventions, you know, like uh, oh, this is a sensor and it has a light sensor, and this allows me to know whether there is a window in the room, right? Yeah. Like I want to know whether there's a window in the room, and I could use this light sensor and I'll give you some feedback. I just need to, you know, make the little glue logic. Uh, you know, I, I, I they could feel uh, uh, do the breadboard, the, the delicate uh, uh, physical operations perfectly, but it was giving it that the little bit of intelligence that glued it all together, and that was a big chasm. Um, and looking back. It became apparent that the problem was was really widespread um, in, a, a, in in the UK uh, a, over the last few years. Uh, computer science has become uh, part of the curriculum, uh, which is really exciting. And, but it, it does mean that there were all these children that were being excluded mm -hmm. from participating in that because um, the same thing that we experienced in the workshop, they were experiencing at a uh, nationwide level there just weren't any tools to teach kids how to program because a lot of the metaphors that we use and the, 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 the tools are very visual uh, when teaching someone someone um, a programming. So there's tools like uh, Scratch, you know, where, where you on screen, you drag and drop blocks and each block represents yep. a, 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 a line of code or a statement and you click them together like Lego. Um, and it's a very visual metaphor or, um, even when we talk about um, uh, text-based coding, it, it is it is very very um, very visual. You know, indentation is meaningful. Uh, you know, the way that, that things align. Um, it's all designed to. It's very uh, graphical, um, and uh, things like screen readers don't really work. It's it's already so abstract what you're trying to convey, and without um, um, without kind of these. Um, uh, simplifications in these abstractions, visual abstractions, is very hard to, to both uh, to, to to build up the, that fundamental um, uh, 
uh, learning. Um, saying that, you know, uh, there are programming and computer science is an amazing career uh, yeah. for yeah. someone that is visually impaired. Um, you know, I've worked with some incredible um, uh, programmers uh, uh, at Microsoft that have little or no vision, um, but it's really incredible how they got there because that that, that initial uh, learning how to code, like it's just it's so hard. You need you, you need to be a really extraordinary individual, I feel like, to be able to overcome those those very hard hurdles. Um, so so this is where we 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 started the discussion. It says it's like maybe there is um, something that we could do to create an on ramp to facilitate those first few steps uh, of of learning to 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 learn the fundamentals of computer science, the computational thinking, um, and, and build up those those first layers of abstraction that that then will lead to someone uh, and to be able to you know become a programmer. Um, so. Um, so one of the things I've always been really fascinated by is um, a, a physical interaction with with technology. You know, and it, you know, in the academic world, it's sometimes called the tangible user interfaces or um, ubiquitous interfaces. The idea that you you uh, you can interact with that with with with, with uh, a computer system by manipulating physical devices. Um, Rather than just touching, uh, you know, tapping on a screen or, or using a keyboard or a mouse. Um, so, so uh, this seems like a particularly a, a, a lot of the, the kind of techniques and technologies that we have developed. Uh, I find it really fascinating to, to see. Well, can we create a physical programming language? Something that uh, a programming language that um, a, where you write code by Clicking together physical objects by linking things by connecting things together, rather than um, writing text on the screen or driving graphical blocks and drawing lines. Yeah. So in some ways, um, you took the Scratch programming language, which where you drag and drop blocks on a screen, which are color coded. So for a, uh, a visual person, it's really easy to grasp. Mm -hmm. You said, what would be the physical manifestation? Of that concept mm -hmm. that's more tactile than visual. Exactly, exactly, and that was our starting point. It's it's actually funny that that you mentioned that because that was exactly the image that I went into it. Uh, and I thought at first I thought, oh, this is going to be easy. We're going to go in and we're going to make just physical versions of those blocks on the screen. Um, but um, we. Again, it, it, we ended up taking a very human-centric uh, approach to, to this problem. And um, what we ended up doing was um, essentially put together uh, a team of um, young inventors, um, uh, kids who had a, a, a range of um, a visual ability from, from no vision to, to low vision to, uh, to completely sighted. And, um, and we call them the 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 uh, our, our our invention team, and they would come in every week uh, uh, to to our lab, and um, we would we started prototyping, and we we, we started a, a, a brainstorming and, and prototyping and putting uh, different things in front of in front of them, and you know said, well, what if uh, you know for our first things like we had this idea, okay, we're just going to make them like blocks. Uh, like you see on the screen, and then we're going to, and they're going to stand together like magnets. And and then uh, you know when when you assemble a program, each block is going to represent a statement in the program, and to connect them, you're going to stand them together, and they're going to form these these stacks, and they're going to be somehow ta uh, tactile. Um, it's going to be straightforward, and so quickly we found out that was a terrible idea. Especially magnets were a terrible idea. Um, and, you know, when you're making a program, it's it's an, it's 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 a very kind of um, intentional process. Having magnets that are snapping when you don't intend them to is, is not great. Um, you know, sometimes you need to um, um, have someone else check your work. So they were passing the program or or explaining to someone else. Uh, you know, you you're passing your your construction to 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 a colleague or to a, a to a peer or to a teacher. 
uh, sometimes th these things fall and, and magnets would just uh, come apart <laughs> and then your program would be scattered all over the floor. Um, and so we learned a lot of things like that. Uh, uh, what particular features work? Like how do you convey that this one is different from this one, but they're all similar or related? Um, you know, uh, you know, how can we use texture? How, uh, you know, um, what is the right s size and scale to, to do something? Uh, you know, I, um, as, a, as a technologist, I guess, we always try to make things small and efficient and tiny. And, you know, uh, we quickly learned that it was really important for people to be able to work together. So the, whereas the objects that we first designed were really small, uh, so we thought, oh, it'd be great. You know, you can stack a lot of, uh, you can make really big programs because the, the individual pieces will be small and then you'll have them all on the table. But more important than that was to be able to do pair programming, uh, which is in, in, in the sense that um, uh, two kids would be learning together and they would be explaining to each other and. A, and, and working together on the same program. So it was important that they were able to, you know, um, put both their hands on an object and understand it together. So 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 the scale of everything was ended up being dictated, you know, by is it, everything are objects that are, you know, the size of two small hands. Um, oh, yeah, that's 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 really fascinating. And and pair so just for our audience, pair programming is uh, is a term where two programmers would sit together, check each other's work, but collaboratively try and solve a problem. Right. So in this instance, uh, since it's a physical manifestation of a digital concept, it needs to be. You're saying it needs to be big enough so both the people involved could understand it simultaneously. Exactly. So no more can it be small pieces. So you ended up having something a little bit larger. A, 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 a little bit larger, and um, um, a, and just like that, there were there were hundreds of design decisions that were, um, um, you know, a completely upended. You know, it it it, it was it was such a, um, a a fascinating experience for me to go go in, you know. I was really humbled, you know, like in, in the sense that, you know, we, we came in with, with some uh, hubris of like, this is how, how, how it's done. And right. it's really taught us, you know, they, they, they invented it as, as, as much as the, the solution, as much as we did. It was a very, very collaborative thing. And the result is so different from what any of us could have imagined uh, right. going in. And so this is, you called it uh, the code jumper. Um, and as I understand it, uh, Microsoft developed it to the point where we handed it off to a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. uh, and so now, is that nonprofit taking over those designs and those artifacts and producing it for uh, visually impaired children? 